Hello, hello, welcome guys. This is the voice of Ken Akure. And in this video, I want to show you guys a simple strategy that any dummy can use in the market and have a good winning rate. Now trading is not easy. Let me begin with that. Trading is not so easy, uh, especially if you find it hard if you have emotional attachment to money, uh, then trading will be very, very hard to you, for you. But if you find a way of, I know it's very hard to discharge our, uh, our emotional feelings for money because we need money for so many things. In fact, money runs the world, you know? If we find a way of uh, detaching ourselves from, uh, the importance of money, so to speak, temporarily, then we'll become very good traders. Now, this is the Bitcoin perpetual chart uh, from FTX. Now, I want to show everyone a simple strategy that any dummy, so to speak, can use in the market and make money. So to begin with, let me clear my chart and start from the very basic. Now, if you log into your chart, most likely it will look something like this, bear, no indicators, nothing. So this strategy I'm about to teach is a combination of price action and indicators. Now price action, uh, uh, naked chart, price action, you're supposed to trade price action without indicators at all. A lot of people take pride in not using indicators in their chart. I find that very childish. You know, what matters is you being able to execute your strategy as simply uh, as possible. Now, to do that, first you create you you use some indicators. So you come to this indicator side. Uh, the first one is you type for moving average. Moving average. There are many moving averages. There's simple moving average, exponential. There are many of them. So you just stick to moving average, click on it. I'm using a free version of uh, Zoom, sorry, of trading view. The next one is the secret indicator. I'm not gonna reveal the name for, except for those who joined the class, but let's call it a trend following indicator called trend magic. Anyway, I've given up the name. So I've added it to my chart. So I now have these two indicators, trend magic and uh, my moving average. Now, this is a simple moving average. What is a moving average? A moving average, as the name implies, takes an average close of price for the period that the moving average is calculating. So for example, this is the 50 moving average, so you set it to 50. Uh, you leave it to close, everything instead of default. Then the style, you can make it white, blue, any color you choose, like you feel like. I make mine white, then that is set to. Then the next indicator, uh, the trend magic, uh, you can change the input. The default is five. You know, you can as well use three but I use three, the default setting is five. You change only the ATR. Now these are uh, mathematical formulas that goes into calculating all this. So I won't bore you with that details. And truly you don't need to know what they are to make money, you don't need to. So you can set it to three, I use three. Others, computer people use five. Then CCI, leave it at 20. Then of course, leave it, leave it the way it is then click on okay. Now you can also change uh, the color of this indicator. You can change it from blue, from green to any color you want. Now, I'll tell you what it does. Now, whenever price is flowing down, you can see that price is below this uh, magical indicator. I call it my magic. You know, and it's showing purple, 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 purple. It tells you that this market overall is going down. 
Then when it starts showing you signs of going up, it will change from purple or violet to green. It will change to green, like you have here. It changed from here to purple. Now you see it change to green, change to green. Then now the price is going down throughout. It's showing purple, purple, purple. It's telling you that all through this place, you should only be selling. You should only be selling, why? Because price is going down, down. So what are you selling? You're selling the pullbacks. As market comes back up, you sell. It goes down, comes back up, you sell. Goes down, come back up, you sell. Until it crosses back above this uh, indicator line and changes from purple to green. You can go back and see how this thing performed since February. So since February here, green, 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 you only be in the buys. When it changes here to purple, you get out of the market, you wait, it turns green, you buy, up, 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 changes purple, you get out, turns green, you buy, changes purple, you get out, goes up, up, up. Like every other thing in trading is not perfect but it will help you a lot. See here that the market dumped a little, dumped a whole lot. When it crossed down, you'd have gotten out. Why? Because it changed from green to purple. You get out. So all the people that are crying, oh, Bitcoin is down. You won't be among them. You wait until here, goes back up, you buy. Comes down here, you get out. So looks so simple, but sometimes applying it might not be that simple. That's why you need to practice. Now, you now combine that with your market baseline, which is this 50 simple moving average. So you now use one as a filter for the other. And how do I mean? Uh, you have a strong case to buy if the first indicator is green and is above your white moving average. So it tells you that this is a case to buy. Even when it crosses below here, below your purple, turns purple, this is not an indication to just get out. Why? It is still above your market baseline, which is this white line. It's still above here. So you won't have just gotten out. You now get out here. When it crosses below this purple line uh, and the purple line changes from green to purple, then it also crosses below this white line here. So indication that, oh, this market is gone, is going down. And what did you see? It went down like a pack of cards. Now, when you scroll back out, let's come to these recent times. Uh, you can see the same thing play out here. Once you cross below your, your white market baseline, this one had turned purple. What happened? It kept dropping, kept dropping, kept dropping, kept dropping. So now that it's below here, it's still not an indication to buy. Why? Even though price is showing signs of recovery, and I believe it has recovered, if you're going to follow this strategy religiously, you have to wait for this to turn to pop, turn to green, then for this white line to come down this way, and you have your price cross above both this line that would have turned to green and your white line. Now, you don't just use these moving averages like that or this setup like that. You do it with a combination of market structure. And how do you identify your market structure? First, by having a proper knowledge of support and resistance. So right now, we'll close all this. We'll hide these indicators. Then, we will draw our market zones, you know. And okay, one thing I didn't mention is time frames. Now you can choose the time frame that you want to be using this trading strategy on. I use it on the one hour mainly because I'm day trading. So I use it on the one hour. You could use it on the four hour if you're swing trading. If you don't know what day trading and uh, if you don't know what swing trading and uh, intraday trading is, then this class you need to learn. You need to learn. Anyway, so you can use it on different time frames. In fact, you can use it on the daily time frame. 
Can you see it on the daily time frame? On the daily time frame, since 6th of May, damn, since, what is 6th of May? Since 21 of April, this market has been screaming that, oh, I'm about to go down. Oh, leave me, I'm about to go down. See, and what happened? If you're following just this from the 6th of May till now, you won't be in this heavy drawdown. In fact, right now, you'll be laughing at all those who are crying that the market is going down. Why? You'd have gotten down here. And why is this so powerful on the daily? For those who don't have time to be checking their chart all the time, you can see that from, okay, from, let's start from here. This is October. From October last year, that this thing crossed over around $10,000. It hasn't gone back below it. Uh, it hasn't gone back below it. Uh, sorry, Found, okay. From October that it crossed up, that, it, uh, that is, uh, this first secondary um, uh, baseline changed from purple to green and crossed above the white line it has remained above from October, right? Even here that I had this massive correction, it still remained above in January, February, March. You know, it only crossed below in April. So you'd have reading this trade up, and when it crossed below in April here, you'd have gotten out of this market and you keep waiting. Now you keep waiting, keep waiting until if you are trading on the daily time frame until it crosses back above, maybe somewhere here, this will come here, go up, then this white line will continue like this and go under price, then price will start going up. If you're trading on the daily, that's what you do. So all this suffering that people are going through here wouldn't have been your problem, do you understand? And even right now, that price is coming, you won't still buy. Why? Because of the time frame you're looking at. Then of course, like I said, you can do that on H42. You know, so different time frames, you understand what time frame you're using and you try to stick to it. Now, this strategy is incomplete if you don't take cognizance of market structure. Now, to draw your market structure, if you're trading on H4, what do you do? You come down to your daily time frame and draw your support and resistance levels. So if you're trading on H1, which is one hourly, you come down to H4 and draw your support and resistance zones. So let's say we're trading on H4. Uh, let's, say we're, sorry, let's say we're trading on H1. So it means we'll come to H4, which is four time frames higher, a factor of four, then we'll draw our support and resistance levels. So we'll pick a horizontal ray, which is this line. What are we picking support and resistance? We are picking the peaks where price had frequent touches. You know, so you have a level here, 40,000. You can adjust this coordinates. You can make it 40,000. 40,000 level, then of course, you have a level down here of, let's make it 30,000. So you put this one here at 30,000. 30,000. So that's your range. You have your range low, your range high. Now within your range, you have some other minor levels. Do you understand? Within your uh, 30,000, 40,000 range, you have some other levels. So you identify those two and that's around. So you now pick these low points. You can make this line, the dotted line, then clone this. Then you pick this line to up here. You know, then you can as well mark into the future, uh, sorry, mark into the past, you know, but now that price is around here, just focus on around here. Then of course, you can also look at, 
other smaller zones, like you have somewhere here, somewhere here, somewhere here. These are your tiny zones. Let's pick here. That's a tiny zone here, you know. So this is your structure. Now you can now unveil your filters. I call them market baseline, they serve as filters. And you've drawn this on the H4. You can now go to the time frame that you're trading on H1. Now, what are you waiting for? You can see that since June, since 21st of June, that this market crossed. Okay, let's take this one for instance. See here, this was 9th of June. Price broke above your secondary indicator change from purple to green. That's first check. Your first check ticked. Then the white line, price crossed above your, your primary baseline. Second check ticked. Next, where is price? Price is an, at an area of support. Third check ticked. Then what do you do? You buy here. You set your take profit at the next support, sorry, the next resistance level, or uh, you set your second take profit like that. Then when price breaks below here, what do you do? If you are still holding any position, of course, you'd have been adjusting your stop loss to break even. You get out of the market, you sell. You sell, it doesn't go far, it ranges, what does it do? It breaks above. What do you do? You get out of your trade. No argument. You don't argue with the market. The market is not your mother. You know, you only flow with the market. Only idiots argue with the market and they end up getting crushed. You know, they end up losing money. So cross above, you buy. And what are you following? The first thing you're following is your support and resistance levels. If you understand market structure, then all through this place, you would have been selling. Yes, I know sometimes you know what to do, but sometimes you are carried away and you decide to try, try another strategy, you know, like buy support. I'm guilty of that too. For example, I tried buying, I think it was here. I tried buying this support here. Why? Because uh, I was trying to play a fast one. Yeah, this was what I was trying to buy the other day somewhere here. I was trying to buy this support, but market broke my heart. Thank God for stop loss. Do you understand? So you stick with it. Now, even though I'm bullish about this market, that, okay, we've gotten to the low, I can still sell here. Why? Price is below my primary market baseline. My secondary baseline is also still below the primary baseline, which is the purple line. You know, I can only be confident of buying on this time frame if price crosses above this area of resistance that is here, closes above it. And by the time it closes above it, it would have also closed. It would have also closed above the candles, would have also closed above this baseline. And this green guy too would have closed above. That was when I buy and I hold on. So following this strategy, once you have, once you sold here, you'd have been in this trade or oh, taking profit gradually and riding it down until down, down to this level. Now that is a simple trading strategy that anybody can adopt. Now, what are the signs you're looking for? Like now, is forming, sorry, it has given you a sell candle. This is a bear, for those who are students of candlesticks, this is a bearish engulfing candle. It's going down, what do I do? I sell. So let me go and sell this market on my account. So even though I tell you that, oh, Bitcoin is bullish, Bitcoin is bullish, maybe it's not ready to move yet. So what do I do? I don't argue, I sell it. So I've entered a sell position on my account. If I'm wrong, it hits my stop loss. No emotions. I move on to the next trade. Now, so what do you do here? You sell. 
somewhere here. No, that's not sell. Sell is the other one. You sell, meaning you go short if you're trading futures somewhere around here, put your stop loss above the next level. Then you're targeting the next support level for your take profit. That's simple. And if price comes down and doesn't get your take profit, no problem. You take whatever price market has made available, you know, and you wait for the next opportunity. That's simple. You're not fighting the market. You're just flowing with the market, knowing that sometimes you will be wrong. Sometimes you'll be right. But then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Your own goal is just to keep following the strategy, irrespective of how you feel. You know, so even though you feel that, oh, market is recovering now, it's not time to buy it until it breaks this resistance, you know, uh, let's draw this resistance. Until it breaks this resistance as here, until it breaks this resistance as here, closes above it, then you can be confident that, oh, this market is about to go up. That's when you will not be confident to enter. But until it does that, you're not buying yet. Even if you have spot, you're not buying yet. Why? Because see what this guy did yesterday. He went up. A lot of you felt, oh, this is the recovery. What did he do? <laughs> he stopped them out. Even me here, when this price I actually sold somewhere here following this strategy, when market got here, ah, I wasn't so sure if to break lower. So I closed some of my positions here. Then when I saw it going down, I was like, oh, if I stayed in this trade, I will have made a little more money. You know? But then it is what it is. I don't control the market. I didn't know that this was going to happen. Just the same way I didn't know that this market was going to pump. You know, so you focus on things that you can control, not on things that you cannot control. And things that you can control is that you can enter and set your stop loss and set your take profit and choose how much you want to risk in this market. Those are the only things you can control. How fast it will move or how slow it will move or how it will move is not your business, it's not your concern. If you start asking those questions, then you are thinking as an idiot. You're not thinking as a trader. You know why? Because you have to accept that I don't control those things. Then that is the end of this video. I'm sure, I hope you got some form of value. Thank you for watching. Ken here, signing out. See you guys in the next one. Cheers.